So I want to talk a little bit about this um, new documentary that's just been released um, called um, uh, Johnny versus Amber. Um, and I wanted to talk a little bit about some things that I've been thinking about in relation actually to this whole um, sentencing and this whole trial and their uh, relationship that maybe you might find useful, maybe uh, might be able to add some value to the quality of your life. Um, so I wrote down two things here that I wanted to share with you. The, the first thing that I want to talk about is that I wrote down is this, that there are two sides to every story. You know, I think it's really, really important particularly in the world of today of social media, um, of, uh, of, of, of the internet, of watching other people become successful, of watching other relationships. I think it's really, really important to always never come to any conclusion until you've heard both sides of the story. And this has been really important, particularly for me, um, when I've got into becoming a counsellor, because the reality of life is this. When you have, for example, a couple that's divorcing, it is very easy for somebody to come into therapy and they will blame their partner. Um, and they will give you their side of the argument about how their partner is abusive, their partner is manipulative, how their partner cheated, how their partner didn't look after the kids, how their partner wasn't um, physically fit or wasn't strong or didn't or lost their job or whatever reason they may give for whatever led up to their uh, end of their relationship but the a lot of the time that's just one version of the story because many times when you listen to their partner share their truth and share their story and share their emotions you get a very different picture of what you've actually just been painted and you're like what your partner said this and they, they painted you out to be this evil villain and this manipulative sick kind of person Yet when we speak to you, you paint a very different picture of how the relationship actually was. And part of that obviously is, you know, it's really important that all of us look at ourselves and, and uh, take accountability. I think we're living in a world today where really a lot of us don't really take accountability. Let's just be honest, right? A lot of people want to blame everybody else for the problems in their life. And the easiest one that we can blame because there is no way of, def of them defending themselves is the government, right? It's easy for everybody to blame the government because the government cannot come out and individually defend themselves. It's much harder to uh, blame your mum or blame your brother because if you come up with that argument, your brother or your mum can actually come forward and give their truth. Um, and, and as I say, much of this comes from this victim mentality that my generation and the generation behind us have developed. This mentality of pointing at other people, pointing at everybody else uh, being the problem. I remember many years ago when I used to work for an estate agent, I used to work for a guy called George Tiedman. And George once said, to, not even once, but he said to me on multiple occasions that Kasim, remember, Every time that you point a finger at other people, there are four other fingers pointing back at you, right? And so I, I, I always remembered what George said when he said that. And so I'm constantly having to evaluate myself. I'm constantly having to look at myself and ask myself, you know, this is one of the, I think this is one of the, I, I talk about, one of the things that I've come to realize in life is that there are these kind of defining questions. There are these big questions that determine our life and uh, revelation and uh, greatness and uh, growth and progress in our life. And one of those questions is, how did I get here? Uh, you could put it another way and ask yourself, what did I do to contribute to this? You know, when a couple breaks up or if you keep going into relationship after relationship after relationship and you keep breaking up or the relationship doesn't last six, seven, eight or however many years you deem to be a long distance, You've got to start, at some point, you've got to start asking, what do I keep contributing to end the relationship? Of course, it's very easy to say, well, my partner cheated on me. My partner was a liar. It's interesting. One of the things that I was looking at is I was looking at people who get divorced and they uh, they blame their partner and they come into therapy. And one of the things that you will hear people come into therapy is that they will blame uh, their partner for maybe cheating or they will blame their partner for uh, being somebody who is not compassionate to them. But the question that you then ask the person is, well, what did you do? What did you do to, 
to lead up to the end of the relationship because a relation takes a relationship takes two people for it to break right to make and also to break right and this becomes of course apparent in this whole amber and johnny depp um scenario because most of us we had already made our judgment before we even heard the full story most of us had come to a conclusion about what we believe who we believed was uh the person who was in the wrong about who we believe was a person who uh, uh, was the villain and actually this goes back to something that i try to work on myself and try to get away away with away from which is this narrative of the villain and the hero right human beings we love this narrative of the villain and the hero we vilify people or we put people up on a pedestal well my mum divorced my dad and my mum did it because she was selfish and my dad was so selfless and he was uh, so committed to the relationship hold on a minute right what about your father what about your father and what he wanted and what he was contributing to the relationship and his in his marriage and and providing hold on a minute let's look at your mum what did your mum need and was this was the decision that she made the best decision for her what led up to her making that decision why not make a decision to stay with your father right and, and i say this because I, you have to look at as many sides as possible you before you come to a conclusion it's just something that i myself have really been trying to work on and it's something that i encourage you to do in your own life right every time you come up to a scenario look at am i vilifying one of these people is this the narrative that i'm trying to put people in he's the villain he's the he's he's the hero she's the villain she's she's the hero hold on a minute why can't we have two people who both are heroes or two people who both are villains or two people who maybe they're not even hero or villain they've just made their own mistakes right because all of us do make mistakes and no, no, no one's perfect i think all of us can pretty much agree to that and yet all of us we tend to want to camp people into one of these categories of either the villain or the good person but life is so much more complicated than that right we, a lot of the time in life we look for the easy answer we look for the well it must be this this is the reason you know you hear people when they break up with somebody somebody will say i want to understand why they broke up with me why did you do it why did you cheat why did you cheat on me and a lot of the time people are looking for kind of like a one answer reason they want to know was it because i was ugly they want to know was it because I wasn't enough was it because of something I did and actually a lot of the time the reason why somebody cheats is an, an accumulation of multiple things sometimes they're unhappy with the person who they become in the relationship sometimes it's because they didn't have their sexual needs met sometimes they just needed a distraction a, a distraction because of the uh, the continuity and the uh, the the frequency and the normalization of that just the relationship had become stale and it wasn't because their partner was bad or the partner wasn't doing what they promised it's just that the, the person had become complacent they didn't want what they wanted at the beginning of the relationship 10 years later so it's just something as i was thinking about this whole amber thing and i was looking and i was watching it and understanding the documentary it's just something that i wanted to share with you to really look at are you looking at all the different angles of things are you looking at your parents breaking up and trying to understand well where was my mum at when she decided to get divorced well why did my father decide to cheat i know he's a liar and he's a cheater and whatever but why what would what would lead somebody to get to that position where they would uh, be cheating so that's the first thing the second thing that i wanted to share with you is something that i've learned actually only really recently as a result of a guy called jordan peterson which is around this whole thing of uh, women use reputation destruction um to essentially manipulate right you know i think we live in this world where most men have been particularly in the western world have been brought up to believe that women are innocent that women don't do any wrong that women uh butter wouldn't melt that women are you know this kind of these angels but actually 
it's quite a startling day as a male or as a man when you come to the realization that actually women are not perfect women have their flaws women are also corrupt women are also uh, manipulative women are also dangerous right one of the areas where we find women are particularly dangerous and women um uh, uh will try to get their way because actually let's go back a minute and let's look at this you know a, a lot of us don't understand that women men tend to be outwardly aggressive whilst women tend to be rip, um, uh, they tend to use innuendo and gossip and reputation destruction to be aggressive you know some of you might say well women are not aggressive and that's why i wanted to reiterate and, and kind of make that clear because women don't show their frustration and their anger out physically they don't hit people some do for example we saw it in the uh, case of of course johnny and amber we saw that she would throw pans and whatever at johnny but the, the and i'm speaking generally here most women don't fit in that camp most women tend to be the kinds of women who fit in the camp of they will for example talk really badly and tell all their friends about what he did wrong about what he cheat about um, him cheating and stuff like that and so one of the things that i was thinking about and, and i was thinking about myself is something where you know and I've, I've really actually struggled a little bit with this because as friends i believe one of the responsibilities that we have towards our own friends and to people that we love is that we have to be careful not to pander to our friends we have to be careful not to simply agree with our friends what I, what i mean by this is that a lot of us we um reaffirm for people things that are not actually true so a friend of ours will come to us and they say do you think i'm fat and actually instead of us saying actually you are fat or you are a little bit obese many of us will say no you're fine you're not that bad or some of us will come uh, to one of our friends and will say, man, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling lost in my life and I'm feeling depressed. And then we will say something on the lines of, well, everybody does feel that you'll be fine, you work it out. But actually, the reality of life is sometimes as men, we need to be saying to our friends, you need to get your shit together. You need to look at what your goals are. You need to start planning things. You need to start working out. You need to start going to therapy if you need to go to therapy. You need to start doing some meditation you need to start looking at self-development and you need to get your shit together right and i say this because there is a balance that you have to you have to look at when you are in these relationships with your friends and whatever because if you're not careful you will do what i did which is that you end up essentially getting into a situation where you there's a phrase that i heard which is unsolicited advice is considered as criticism so where you're giving advice to somebody when they don't want it and there is a danger of that but I truly believe that as friends one of the responsibilities that we have is to give our friends advice really good advice sometimes we have to say to them <coughs> things that they not may not necessarily want to hear for example uh, a friend of yours might come to you and they might be saying well I think I'm thinking I'm, I'm thinking about getting a divorce I'm thinking about breaking up with my missus or whatever it may be and you sometimes have to be the kind of friend who says whoa hold on a minute before you make a drastic decision before you go crazy before you are impulsive I know that you're hurting at the moment but let's look at the greater picture let's really examine this and actually a lot of us at the moment don't have people in our lives who say that to us, <laughs> which is why so many of us, you know, people say, why are so many people separating? Why are so many people unhappy in their relationship? Part of it is that we don't have people to basically get us to say, get your shit together, right? Like, stop. Think about what you're actually saying. Think about what you're actually doing right there was a friend of mine who was thinking about quitting his job and he's like Kasim I hate this job I can't do it but I was like hold on a minute before you make any drastic decisions you've still got rent to pay it's an, we're going through a pandemic at the moment you can't just find a job just like that okay right and anyway if you, you could use this opportunity with this job to improve um, uh, your leadership to improve uh, managing people who are difficult because 
as you you want to progress as you progress in leadership it's only going to get tougher all you're going to be handed with is more problems and more issues and and more basically that as you go up into the leadership and so i'm saying to him don't avoid dealing with these problems which are you're currently dealing with because they're really useful for you you need them in order to grow in order to progress in order to take things to that next level so that's some of the things that i was thinking about and i, I was just thinking about this whole concept of just to finalize this this whole concept of women and really understanding that you have to be really careful guys to get that women can be destructive right women can be manipulative women can torture you and so you you need to be around people who can give you good advice you need to be reading books on women and understanding women's nature and the way women operate because as much as we say that men and women are equal yes we are on the broader spectrum but when it comes to the details we're not right if you give men and women a choice between a woman becoming an engineer or women going into nursing it's a fine detail, but most women are going to go into nursing. If you give a man the difference between uh, sleeping with multiple women or having one woman, most men are going to go to, are going to go with multiple women. That doesn't mean that they're bad or whatever. It just means that on the smaller details, typically we are different. Now that doesn't mean there are not some men who will not go for uh, for the one woman. There are loads of men who go for one man, one woman. But I'm just talking about the broader spectrum here um so i don't know whether that's added some value to your life or not but um i hope it, it has and i don't know maybe comment below i'd love to hear what your thoughts are thanks for watching guys